Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. I'm Maddie, I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. All of my closet and store information will be linked down below. So if you guys see anything that you like, please mention that you're from YouTube and I will give you a fantastic discount on the pieces. All right, let's get started. So this is a haul from three different thrift stores. I went all in one day, so by the third one, I was a little burnt out because I think I was on hour like number six, but it was a fantastic day of thrifting. Um, these thrift stores are about, they range from, the furthest one is 40 minutes from me, and then the closest one is about 20 minutes from me. So when I go out there, I go with really high hopes, and I'm really open-minded about things because I want to get enough things to make it worthwhile. With that said, I am in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I do have closer thrift stores, but sometimes it's fun just to take a little thrift trip out there, make sure that, you know, we're exploring different stores, different options. My average cost of good for this particular trip was around $5, which um, is a little bit high for me, but I also got some things for my library. If you guys do not know, I am a full-time school librarian. I was a full-time kindergarten teacher, but I have since gotten my master's degree, and so this upcoming fall, exciting news, I will now be in the school library. Um, I will show you guys the things I got from my library at the end of this haul, just in case you're interested. Maybe give you some ideas of what you can find for your kiddos, or if you're a teacher like me, for your classroom, or hey, sometimes I even find things. Um, for my friends and I give it to them for their kids so let's get into clothing and shoes and all of that fun stuff first though so I'm going to start with what I'm sending to the real real um, if you guys don't know I love sending things to the real real I send in brands that I just have experience with that I know don't really move on eBay or Poshmark or Mercari and it's just much easier to put it in a box send it to the real real and then just hope for the best um, I do have a video about my top 10 The Real Real sales. They are pretty outdated right now, but I will link that up in the cards if you guys want to check that out. But let's get into it. Um, so the first thing I'm sending to The Real Real is a matching suit set. I don't believe I've ever sent them a matching suit set, but the brand is Lafayette 148. This is a brand that I see often. Um, I've tried to list it on my own, like cute pieces, and it didn't move, so I've now just send it to the real real and it's just some striped pants and then I have a matching blazer as well I think the trick to the real real is just finding things at the lowest cost of goods that way even if you're only getting the lowest percentage payout which is 40 percent you're still profiting something and you didn't have to photograph or send it to your buyer or anything the real real also provides you with a label and they'll do a UPS package pickup that you can schedule through them. Um, this blazer, I think I need to wash. It's just a little bit dirty and I don't want them to send it back because of that. This is Ralph Lauren Black Label. The Black Label and the Purple Label are accepted by The Real Real. They don't price it um, crazy high, but it typically moves pretty quickly and it's just a nice blazer. Um, it is just covered in hair. So like I said, I'll probably wash that because I want to make sure that they are going to accept the pieces. And the great thing is, unlike ThreadUp, they don't charge you to send back the pieces. They just send back whatever they don't want to accept, and it's back in your possession. You can do whatever you please with it. This is one of my favorites to send to the real real. It always moves really quickly. Diane von Furstenberg. I know some people have luck selling this on their own. I am not one of those people. This is a really lovely dress, though. I love that little mesh. And then it's lace. I have tried countless occasions to send Di or to sell Diane von Furstenberg and it doesn't work out. Plus I have so much inventory that I really don't think I need to be listing anymore. This is Haute Hippie and it's got a cool little graphic here. I considered selling this one on my own but I just, like I said, have so many things already. This is Vintage Burberry. If it says Burberries like that, that does mean that it is vintage. Don't think it's fake just because of the Burberries. It's pretty boring. It's just a men's button down. And the last thing I'm going to send to the real room is a Theory Blazer. Debated selling this one on my own as well because Theory Blazers actually don't do that poorly. It's just... 
again, much easier to put it in a box, send it to the real real on its way, and then have them do the work. You guys can't see, I am just surrounded by clothes right now, so I really don't need any more to um, list and photograph, so it's always fun just to send it on its way. All right, let's get into shoes. I am not a big shoe seller, which I didn't realize I got seller inset insight finally, which shows you like the breakdown of all your Poshmark sales. I just don't typically pick up shoes because I don't find a lot of shoes. I do like shoes um, from like Nordstrom Rack, retail arbitrage type, but I didn't realize that shoes was my number two selling category. It goes dresses, shoes, and then tops, which I never would have guessed. I would have guessed dresses and tops, but I was really surprised by shoes. So I did find quite a few pairs of shoes today, which was very exciting. So um, this pair of Crocs, this is a women's size seven. Um, I don't remember if I told you guys, but I have not photographed any of this stuff. I haven't cleaned any of the shoes or anything. This is straight from the thrift store to your computer screen now. So Crocs are always an easy like 20, $25. And then we have a pair of Clark's boots. These are in really great condition. I don't have the best luck with Clarks, but I thought that um, this is a really unique style, kind of one of their classic styles. And these are a size nine. So really great condition. I'm excited to see how those will do. Um, I don't typically find those type of Clarks. I found like wedges and flats, which they're not really known for, and those have done very poorly, but I have seen that the boots do better. This is my first time finding this brand, but I've heard really great things about it. It is the brand Fly London, and I believe this is a comfort shoe brand, but it's just these little like slingbacks. They're in really great shape. They have a peep toe. And I think these are called like perforated little holes here. So really interesting. These are a size 37, so a 7. And then I have a pair of Lucky Brand shoes. Goodwills around me love to price up Lucky Brands, but this particular chain um, that I had gone to this day, they always price Lucky Brand very reasonably. And these are really cute with the fringe. They have like no signs of wear at all. I really like these. These are a size eight and a half and they are real leather. Then completely out of my wheelhouse, I also did find two pairs of men's shoes. They are like gigantic, bigger than my face. These are a pair of Echo, Eco, E-C-C-O. I'm not 100% sure I'm saying that right. These are a comfort shoe brand as well. I don't have very much experience selling it. It says they are a size 46, which I'm not really sure what that would translate to. I will just look at the size chart, but they are very big. And they're just a nice pair of men's black dress shoes. Another pair of men's dress shoes. These are Kohan, and they are the Nike Air. You can see that right there. And the Nike Air Kohan collaboration are a little bit more sought after. These are really nice, in good condition. I think they were donated by the same person because again, they are humongous. These are a size something undetermined. <laughs> um, I will look at that later. I don't know where the size is. Oh my goodness, these are a size 15. That's gonna take your right buyer for sure. That's a humongous size. Last pair of shoes. This is a woman's pair of Crocs. They are just um, a flat and these are in a size 9 in really good condition. Alright, I was on a roll today. I never find bags or backpacks or anything of the sort, but I did find two. And the first one is not that exciting. It's just a really nice Eddie Bauer purple backpack. I'm not expecting anything crazy. The interior was really clean, really nice in there, so I did decide to pick it up. It was very reasonably marked. And then the other bag is a Wilson's leather little messenger bag. And again, the interior was just in fantastic condition. It has a strap, and then you can just flap it open, put your laptop in there. There's the Wilson's leather. I certainly don't always pick up Wilson's leather, but when it's in condition, good condition and 
it's very practical I will all right moving on to one of my favorite categories is a sports bras because they are so easy to photograph they're not going to make you the most money but it's like two photographs you're good to go and they're normally priced really inexpensively so the first one I have here is a Tory Sport which is Tory Birch's activewear line it's this fantastic blue color it's a size medium then I have another Tory Sport and it was interesting because this thrift store had really priced up Lululemon and they had priced up like Kate Spade whenever I saw a few Kate Spade things. But they did not, I guess, realize that this was part of Tory Burch's line. Otherwise, and they would have priced it up. I'm going to guess this one is also size medium. It's kind of worn on there. I'll include measurements. This one is so cute. It's a little animal print, orange, and a navy blue. Then I have an Athleta sports bra. It's this fantastic yellow color with the cute little baby pink on top. This is a size medium strappy back. Another Athleta sports bra. This one is a little bit more of a like bra style. Baby pink. This one is a size small T-strap. All right, next moving on to jeans and pants. So jeans and pants, I don't know why, but they're one of my least favorite things to photograph. I would say shoes are probably my least favorite because I hate cleaning them. And then jeans and pants, I don't know what it is. I just don't like photographing them. But when I find good ones, I can't pass them up. And they typically do sell pretty okay. So the first pair I have is a pair of Levi's. This is the 7-Eleven Skinny. And these are in a size 26, but I thought these were really unique because of the pockets on the front here. They're a darker wash. And whenever it's this skinny tag, I will typically pick it up if it's like a skinny style or it says high rise or if I just think that they're cute. Worst comes to it, a buy sell trade store will take them from you. Next we have Madewell. These are the nine inch mid-rise skinny in a size 29. Only buy these this um, style if they're really inexpensive. This is just a pair of black jeans. Madewell jeans have definitely decreased in value. When I start, first started reselling about three years ago, whenever I saw Madewell jeans, like my heart like started like skipping beats because I was so excited. Now it's like, okay, that's gonna be like $25, which is still fantastic, but definitely decreased in value. Then we have a pair of seven for all my mankind shorts. Always love a good denim short. These again are probably gonna go for like 15 to 25. These are size 28. And I thought these were really cute. This is a pair of Zara pull-on jeans. These are in a size medium, Zara basic. They have that little sailor button. These are kind of more of a jigging, I would say. There's a little zipper on the side to get in, but cute. I was excited to find these because they are brand new with tag and it is a pair of Spanx and they're just black shapewear. These always go really quickly and the fact that I found them brand new is amazing. This is a size medium and it says that originally they were $62. an exciting find. These are brand new with tag as well. Levi's 721 high rise skinny size 28. A nice light wash. The high rise skinny always do very well. Have some just dressing on the front which is very trendy. So those will be a good flip. And I don't have much experience with this brand but I just kind of thought these were interesting. This is Kendall and Kylie, size extra small. These are a high rise. 
and they're a pleather short so it's definitely a look pair of Athleta jeans size 4 And we have a pair of J. Crew jeans. These are a 27 tall. I've heard that the tall sizes do a little bit better. And they have this really fun stripe going down the side. I most certainly don't always pick up J. Crew, and especially not J. Crew denim, but I thought that with them being a tall size and that stripe, that they could be a little bit more desirable. And the last pair of bottoms I have is just a classic. American Eagle, that is the newer tag. These are in the style high rise shorty in a size two. We have the distressing, and these typically go for about $15. Moving on to tops and sweaters. Found one of my favorite mall brands, and you will see this throughout. I think this is my number four selling, best selling brand. This is Torrid. Size one, it's a nice orange top, Torrid, um, I think the average selling price I had was $14 on it, or 14 days, so two weeks for it to sell, and it will sell at a lower price point, anywhere from like $15 to $25, but it flips so quickly, I just can't turn away from it, especially because my thrift stores really don't price it up. This is BDG, which is Urban Outfitters, size large. It's a nice oversized striped shirt, again in that $15 to $25 range. A little bit more than I would want to pay for it. Like, I think that itself was like $2. I want to say it was a half off color, but since I average everything and it comes out to $6, it's like, uh, I think of it as $6 and that would be more than I want to pay for that. This is Fila, which I don't typically pick up, but I thought this was cute. Might put this on Depop. It's just a little colored block crop top, size medium. I have sold, I think, three things on Depop, so I am definitely not an expert, but maybe one day. This is Fig and Flower, size large. There is a flaw, it is missing a button, which I didn't realize until I read it home. But this brand, especially in larger sizes, normally sells really quickly for about $15 to $25. That's the trend of this video, it's $15 to $25, if you guys haven't noticed. Definitely a bulk seller and a bread and butter seller. Right, this next piece is interesting because I found, I won't show you all three, but I found three of the same tops in the same size. Um, so this is Mod Cloth, size small, and I have three of these. But it's just a nice black basic. It's got the fluted sleeve. I just thought that was very interesting to find the same exact blouse in the same exact size. Maybe someone really likes to buy their basics. That way they don't wear it out. I'm not really sure. This is Wrangler, which I don't often pick up, but I thought this was kind of cool. Size small. It is a pearl snap denim shirt. And I like the little W's on the breast pockets. I have no idea what I'm going to price that at. I think I'll also put that on Depop. Then a great brand. This is my number three best-selling brand, Free People. Size small. Oh, I think I noticed a flaw. Looks like there's a little stain on it that I'll have to try and get out. Let me see if I can find it. Just saw it. Right there, if you guys can see that, it's nothing major. But this is just a button snap plaid shirt. It's always hard to tell when you're in thrift store lighting what things actually have on them and what things actually look like. Next we have an Adidas shirt, size small. This is the um, originals because it has the trefoil. And it says Chicago. So someone that loves Chicago will definitely snatch that up. This is an interesting piece. This is Woolrich. 
which I definitely don't always pick up, but I just thought this was too interesting to ignore. It is a men's shirt, size, question mark. It looks like the size has been worn off, but I will include measurements. And it's got deer all over it, and it's kind of just interesting. I don't know. I see Kaylee Elaine um, sell things like this all the time for a really high dollar amount, so I am excited to look up comps and see how something like that will do. Another men's shirt. I don't always look through the men's section, but sometimes when the store is smaller, one of the stores I went to was a little bit smaller, I will look through men's and kids just to see what's going on. This is Psycho Bunny, size 16 and a half, and then the neck is 34, 35. And I don't have any experience selling this brand, but I know that it does okay. It's just a purple little gingham plaid. The material is really nice. There's a little bunny on the sleeve, but I think that's like a $30 to $35 flip, but I could be wrong. This next piece I got from my boyfriend, but it was a little bit small for him. It is, um, it is Polo Ralph Lauren, size medium, and it's this really nice pink polo shirt. I'm not expecting too much. Like I said, I had intended to give this to my boyfriend. It was just way too tight on his chest. Um, he is a very interesting proportion. He's a bodybuilder and so he has a really broad chest and really broad shoulders but he's only 5'9 so he's on the shorter side. So he sometimes can fit into a medium, sometimes he can fit into a large and so with Ralph Lauren we've tried large on him but it is so long. So I was like okay maybe a medium and now it is too tight but it's the perfect length so I just don't think that's his brand. Alright, so next we have a Madewell top. This is a size small. I thought this is really cute with flowers. It's a boxier fit. Um, I know a lot of people have stopped picking up Madewell. I think that you can definitely still pick it up. It's kind of like a free people in anthropology. Pick it up if it's at a low price point, but keep your expectations realistic. Don't start it off at $40 like you used to get. Start it off at like $25, $28, and then be willing to accept offers. All right, next we have Anthropology. Anthropology is actually my number one best selling brand, probably because I have so much of it. This is a size small, Mave, just a nice polka dot blouse. You can wear this to work with some khaki pants and be good to go. Another men's shirt, this is Nike Dry Fit, and I picked this up because it is the Olympic women's soccer shirt, which I thought was really interesting. I believe this is a size extra large, so interesting. Haven't looked up comps on this, but maybe because it's an Olympic shirt, be a little bit pricey. It says authentic 2014. I saw Nicole State find some things like that and she said that they were valuable, so you will see. This is a good basic athleta size small. This is another one of my brands that sells really well. Not for a lot, but that is okay. Then we have a Disney Parks, which I don't always pick up, but sometimes if it's cute I will. Size small, and it's got all of like the classic characters on there. I think even Dumbo and the Chipmunks are on there. I was watching Dumbo at the end of the school year with my kindergartners, and it just like breaks my heart how mean they were to Dumbo. I know that's so sad, but I hadn't seen that movie since I was a kid, and like the kids and I were like, oh my goodness. They're so mean to him. His name isn't Dumbo. His name is Jumbo. So like, it hurts my heart even to call him Dumbo because that's not his name, guys. All right, Torrid Double Zero, which is a large. This is uh, actually a dress, but I guess I sorted it wrong. But it's very pretty. It is sheer. I don't always pick up Double Zero when it comes to Torrid, but this print was just too pretty. Kind of reminded me of like, a Zimmerman print. Obviously the material 
and the structure of it isn't anywhere near Zimmerman quality, but just the print. Then we have one of my favorite lag and look brands, Pretty Angel. This sells really well on eBay. Size small. I love this lace all over it. Little ties at the bottom. This brand does really well whenever it is like kind of lacy like that. If it's just plain, it really doesn't move. And it only goes for about $25 to $30. Ooh, do you guys hear those sirens? Robert Graham men's shirt. This is a size medium. Um, it is not one of his funkier pieces, so it'll probably not sell for all that much. But that's okay. I love the teal color on it, though. Another fig and flower. This is a petite large. And again, this moves pretty quickly for me, normally on eBay. And the last shirt I have is another men's piece. I was really bummed out that this wasn't in my boyfriend's size. This is Ted Baker, size 3. I will have to look at his size chart, but I want to say that's like a medium or a small. And I just love this. It's this amazing blue color and it's got little flowers all over it it's a really nice dress shirt i kind of like it when men's shirt aren't they're not like super flamboyant but they're not really boring either and i think that's a good mix all right sweaters and blazers i don't typically pick up lauren ralph lauren green tag but this was just really nicely made it is a plaid blazer. It's in a fantastic size. It's an 18W, 18 wide, in great condition. It does have all of the buttons, and I thought this is just so classic. This is something that I would want to wear to work. I'm not sure what I'm going to price that at. I think I'm going to start high, though. Tabitha, which is anthropology, like old anthropology, so don't expect much. Say small, just a little embroidered sweater. Next we have MG. I don't pick up all MG, but if I think it's cute, I will. Especially their like kimonos sell really well for me. This is a kimono, it's a size medium large. It is animal print, very oversized. I sold an MG kimono that was like rainbow printed in hours of me listing it so that really influenced me to get this and I pretty much never pick up this brand but it was very inexpensive and I am a sucker for kimonos this is exhilaration which you guys probably already know is target it's an extra small small maybe I'll keep this and it's velvet and floral so I may try this on and end up keeping it but if not like $15 probably is what I'll start it at. Then we have a free people jacket. This is a size medium. And this is a distressed denim jacket, but it also has like sweatshirt sleeves and a little hoodie. So it's kind of like streetwear, I think. I don't know. I'm very girly and feminine and preppy. So when you ask me like, what's streetwear? I'm like, I don't know, maybe something like that. <laughs> a little edgy then um, I found this twice same thing it's another mod cloth piece size small and I found two of these I'm only gonna show one but it's just a nice black blazer single button ruffle on the back but again I thought that was interesting that I found Two of those in the same style, just like I found three of those um, mod cloth black shirts. So something was going on there. I'm glad I found it all. I like selling mod cloth. Um, this piece was just too interesting to leave behind. It is parsley and sage, which I don't know anything about. Medium, and it has a leather trim on it, like real leather. And it's just so interesting. It's kind of gaudy. I put this on Depop as well. Here's the back. But it was one of those pieces that I was just like, I probably shouldn't be getting this, 
but I just I would feel guilty if I left it behind. It's just too unique. All right, so moving on to my number one category and my favorite category, and that would be dresses. All right, so this is J. Crew size four. I don't pick up all J. Crew, but if I think that it's cute, I will pick it up. And I like J. Crew because they typically do have the stock photo. It's a fantastic color. Kind of reminded me of the silhouette um, of Draper James, which is Reese Witherspoon's line. Kind of conservative like that. Very feminine, very girly. It is a little bit thicker than I would want personally, but it's nice. I have some jumpsuits in here as well. This is American Eagle. That is an older tag, size large, but pick these up. It's just a pair of floral overalls, cute buttons on the pockets. Um, anytime I find overalls by American Eagle, they typically sell really quickly and they get a lot of interest. It doesn't matter if they're printed like this. The denim ones do better, but the printed ones will also sell. Anthropology Maeve, size 8. Lovely Swiss polka dot dress. Just buttons all the way down. It's a really good workwear dress, or you can wear this casually. I'd wear this with like a pair of heels and just spin around. <laughs> then I don't always pick up this brand, but Kaylee Elaine made a really good point. This is Fashion Nova that they sell out of style. So even though they are cheaper, they sell out of these styles. And so that can make your piece a little bit more desirable. This is a floral Hawaiian printed jumpsuit. It is very funky. Another good thing about Fashion Nova is you can easily find the stock photo. This is a size medium, I believe. Yes, size medium. And you guys can see it says like the cut and the style number on the interior tag. So that does make it very easy to look up. Or you can just use Google Images. And since their prints are so eye-catching and unique, normally it pulls straight up without even having to put in the style number. Torrid size 2X. I love this. This is a really pretty formal dress. It's gold and slinky. I would say it's probably about past your knees, maybe a midi length. Very nice. I won't price that for anything crazy because anytime I price Torrid too high, it just sits and sits. This next piece I am in love with. Find the top of it. Here we go. It is Bowden. The yellow dot, I believe, is their newest tag. And this is a size 8 long, and I love it. It's this bright red floral maxi. There's little buttons on the sleeve. This is cute, and I think this is going to do very well. Not all Bowdoin sells well, but normally whenever it's a more unique piece like this, it goes really quickly. Then we have Free People. And the tag on this one is pretty mutilated. It is that fancy free people tag, if you guys can see, but it looks like they washed it and it went berserk. This is a size 8, and I did confirm that it was free people by looking at the RN number, 66170, same as Anthropology and Urban Outfitters. It's got tulle on the bottom. I love tulle. I think it's just so feminine. And then a cutout back. That fancy free people tag sometimes does really well and then sometimes it's kind of a flop. I have a bad feeling this is a flop piece, but we'll see. I picked this piece up. It's Zara size small because I thought that the tweed is always in and People love those like Chanel vibes, even though this is nowhere near Chanel, but I suspect that this will do really well. I don't think it's a blogger favorite, but I will research. 
another J. Crew piece. This is J. Crew size two, and this is really nicely made. It's got the fluted sleeve. It's between like a red and an orange. I'm always afraid to describe this color. Once I got like in kind of an eBay fight about this lady, she bought a sweater from me and I had described it as red. To me, it looked like it was red. And I had put in there like reddish orange, but I had described it as more of a red. And she, I think it went for like nothing. It went for like $12. It was nothing. She sent me this really nasty message and she was like, this is orange. I've surveyed all my friends and this is orange. And I was like, I'm really sorry. It looks red to me. Do you want a refund? Like, what do you want? And she just never responded. And I was like, okay, that's weird. She didn't leave me negative feedback or anything. It's been months now. But I was like, oh my goodness, she's really upset over the color of a $12 sweater. I don't know. I have bigger issues personally, but I don't know. I've heard that some people are putting crowns next to their listings. Um, that way people can compare. And that's a good idea. I certainly have some crowns lying around here being a teacher and everything, but I might start doing that. Torrid size 3X. This is a really pretty black lace dress. Another Madewell piece. I love this dress. This size 2. And this is just perfect for the fall time. I would wear this with some riding boots. The sleeves are sheer. Very cute. And some of their dresses do sell for a decent amount, so definitely always look up the style on that. Madewell is a lot like J. Crew, where the style is going to be easy to find on the interior tag. Fashion Nova, size small. This is cute. This is a polka dot jumpsuit with like a sweetheart strapless neckline. I love this. I'm a huge fan of polka dots though. Got like a wide leg. Then we have a Revolve brand. This is By The Way. Size medium. Revolve brands are so fickle. This is one of the cheaper ones, so I'm not expecting anything crazy. It's cute though, but Revolve brands, they either sell for so much or they sell for like $25. And sometimes they just sit and sit. So I'm kind of over Revolve personally. I love looking on the website though. I don't ever buy anything because it's crazy expensive, but... It certainly gives me some fashion inspiration. Anthropology Girls from Savoy, size extra small, and it's just a plain black tank dress. Girls from Savoy is one of the brands that typically sells really quickly for me, and it's because they have very traditional styles. I don't think that they work with Anthropology anymore, but maybe they do. This next brand I've sold twice. It is Kaz New York, and my understanding is, is that this has been sold in Anthropology a handful of times, but it's sold at like Nordstrom and Dillard's, kind of those higher end department stores. This is lace, it's got these really fun tassels. I'm not really sure what I'm going to price this at. And the size is on the interior tag. I think when I looked it was a medium but I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay, I never picked this brand up, but this was half off and I just thought it was cute. This is BCBG Generation. So that's their lower end brand line, I should say. Size zero, and I had seen this the last time I went. And I was like, oh, it's so cute with the little scallop and then it's got a cutout fit and flare but I was like no and then it's still there and it was half off I think it came out to like two dollars I was like okay I want this now unfortunately I am seeing there is some peeling on the back here but still very cute worst comes to it I might keep this very cute though then we have Cloth and Stone, which I don't always pick up, as you guys know, but if it's reasonable, I will. Size small. 
And this is a really cute black and white plaid jumpsuit. It's got a tie waist. And I love the ruffle on the sleeve. And I say jumpsuit, I totally meant romper. Another brand that I don't often pick up, this is BCBG Max Azria. This is just too pretty. Extra small, it's like that classic lace. Now I need to do some investigating because I'm pretty sure this little panel right here, someone sewed it in their self and I'm pretty sure why I think that is because I mean, like, no way that a professional sewer did that. So I might just have to cut that out and then disclose that it was there. Um, I can understand why someone did that, like, just for modesty purposes. But, like, that stitching job is not, not very good. It's probably about as well as I would sew. And our last clothing piece is another Torah dress. This is a 2X. And it's just this really fun red velvet dress. Love that. All right, so that is all of the clothing, shoes, bags, and everything that I got. Again, if you guys are interested in anything, I will link everything down below. My Instagram, my Poshmark closet, my eBay star, my Mercari. Tell me that you're from YouTube. I will give you a good deal. Um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to see some more reseller content. If you do want to stick around, I am going to show you the things that I did get from my library. If you don't, I understand. It's not your thing. And I will see you guys next time. All right, things I got from my library. This is so cute. It does have a few, like, nicks in it, but that's okay. It's li Librarian Bear. That's how I'm thinking of calling her. Library and bear. So I'm going to put this in my office. Like you guys can see, there are a few little dings, but that's okay. She's so cute. Um, if you guys can't tell, we love the Baylor bears here. That's where my boyfriend went to school. So we always find bear things kind of value those. So I'm going to put that in my office, like I said. Then I am really, really amazed by this. Can't wait to take this out of the packaging. This is... I don't know if you're supposed to say Aria, A-R-I-A, Aria's Adventures, and it says that it's a virtual reality animal park. I think the kids will fight over this if it ends up being cool. I do obviously need to play around with this. It looks like it comes with a little headset, but seriously, how cool, and this only cost me like 10 bucks, so if it's a fail, I'm only out $10, no big deal. Then... We have a classic in a different way. This is Monopoly and you get to build the track and I could open it up to make sure that the pieces are in there. Always good to see. So very interesting. Um, my little kids that I was teaching, my kindergartners, they would bring their own board games at the end of the year just to like have some fun. And they brought in Monopoly and it's just crazy how many versions there are. Like I had, I think, Spongebob Monopoly going while also having a unicorn Monopoly going. So always a classic, always a good one. All right, this is interesting. This is going to go with our STEM program, Science, Eng Science Technology, Engineering, and Math. And this is air-powered racers. So we can talk about, you know, what's moving them. We can build the racers. Again, I was able to open the box to make sure all of the pieces are in there. Here's what back looks like. Very cool. I'm excited for this one. No motor, no battery, and DIY science kit power. So, very, very cool stuff. Two more things. This is gyroscopes and flywheels. So, a lot of pieces in here. And you get to assemble it. Very cool. We're gonna have some fun in the library. And then the last thing is called Quil Quilling Paradise. And you can make little things out of it. Very interesting projects. Again, I need to play around with all of this stuff. That way when I'm teaching the kids, I'm not also like teaching myself at the same time. But exciting finds like I said if you have a kid that is bored at home this summer or anytime take them to the thrift store you never know what you're gonna find I found all that in one of the stores I went to and there was even more there 
that I ended up leaving behind because I was like, oh my goodness, my cards are overflowing, people are staring at me, I don't know how much more of this I can store in my apartment, so you never know, take them, they don't drive you crazy, or find them some things if you don't want to take them to the actual store. But that is everything, again, thank you so much for watching, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, check out my closets down below, and I will see you guys for my next video, bye!